man, we're going to touch down real quick on all of the shootings we're seeing manifest in our society and the fact that majority feel that they're picking up in frequency or happening more often. According to the news, it seems like the shootings are happening a lot more often. The news is covering them in a more vigilant fashion than ever before. We have a lot of gun control legislature happening. Um, we know that the Biden presidency brought about a lot of gun control legislature that wasn't previously prevalent under the Trump administration, but there's a lot of illusions. So let me go ahead and clarify, man. First of all, a lot of people are under the impression that one president or candidate is for two-way rights in comparison with the other. That is not the case. Biden is just more aggressive on gun control. All right, he's more in your face about it, whereas Trump is going to lean in the direction that basically revolves around his personal gain or benefit. A lot of people be like, that's not true. Yes, it is. I look into these things because I don't have a blind allegiance to one or the other. I view both Trump and Biden as the overgrown toddlers they are. They're just industrial-sized infants in different fashions. Let me go ahead and clarify. Trump is on record. Now, nobody really catches these things because he doesn't. He didn't have an anti-gun rhetoric. You know what I mean? That wasn't one of the main premise. That wasn't a premise for his agenda. Okay? Now, let me go ahead and clarify. Trump's on record saying, hey, man. Why even have any court proceedings when it comes to taking guns away? Why don't we just take them away from people without any court proceedings whatsoever? I think it was regards to bump stocks. He did ban bump stocks. Trump did ban those, okay? So it's not like he's 428. No, he was banning things, leaning in the direction that whatever illusion was spun his way in regards to anti-gun legislature, Trump would do anything necessary to further his personal gain or agenda, just like any other candidate. That's why he banned bump stocks, and that's why he's on record saying, hey, man, you know, literally they asked him, oh, well, we, it's hard to take guns away from people, you know, required, they have rights, uh, constitutional rights, so on and so forth, legalities are involved, you know, there's court proceedings, and Trump literally on record saying, well, why can't we just take the guns away from people without any court proceedings whatsoever. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of people we're dealing with. Not one of them is our savior. It's important for people to get that through their thick heads. Second of all, the reason why I'm adamant about understanding things for what they are, that's how you forge solution. That's how you become an asset instead of an obstacle, by having a clear, accurate perception of life itself. Life is comprised of many different aspects, regardless of whether it's the broken welfare system we've discussed, politicians being overgrown toddlers, people having a blind allegiance to one party or the other, um, utilizing immigrants as scapegoats. We've also touched down on people utilizing firearms as scapegoats, all right? Regardless of irrefutable statistics, people utilize their scapegoats. Immigrants aren't coming in here perpetrating majority of the acts committed against children, but people point at immigrants as scapegoats. They, our children aren't safe. Immigrants. Yeah, no, man. They don't roam around here with an orthodox appearance disguise preying upon children for decades on end with zero accountability. We all know what leads to that. A lack of accountability with the individuals that look like Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy. They're never held accountable. They don't look like gang member or immigrant. And they drive around doing bad things for decades on end a lot of times. You know, it's a recipe for disaster. Kids and animals catch the bad end of the stick when accountability doesn't pertain to everyone equally. So that's what our movement's all about. Nobody playing the victim card, regardless of your circumstances. You got to evolve and be the solution and learn from your mistakes continually. I mean, we can't make excuses. None of us. All right. So while we discuss all those other societal aspects, we also discuss the manner in which firearms are utilized as scapegoats. OK, here's a good analogy. A lot of people. What are you talking about? Guns are bad. Guns kill kill. They're big and scary looking. No, nah, homie. Hold on a second. All right. What about a seatbelt? You don't view seatbelts through that same lens. You don't view seatbelts as some tumultuous enemy on the horizon of chaos and turmoil and death and violence. No, but, but guess what? The seatbelt is the same as the firearm. Statistics prove it. People die every year due to utilizing seatbelts incorrectly or not utilizing them at all. You know that? Seatbelts kill people every year. But overall, they save more lives than they take. If you view things with an open mind, you don't have any preconceived notions you're not allowing your mindset or perception to be shaped by external sources by the media by their the blind allegiance to political parties prevalent in our society <clears throat> you can research these things on your own accord too now check this out seat belts kill people every year 
due to not wearing them or not utilizing them correctly. People get cut in half. It's, it's a very gruesome scene, too, when a seatbelt takes somebody's life. But should we ban seatbelts? No, because they save more lives than they take, and they're crucial. They're essential. They're necessary. Firearms save more lives than they take. I'm pretty sure it's about 600,000 life-threatening instances are prevented every year via firearms, meaning those individuals throughout that encounter would have mo most likely lost their lives if it wasn't for their firearm, okay, which resulted in them defending themselves or their family, and a life wasn't lost. Now, not only are 600,000 life uh Life-ending altercations prevented via firearms yearly, annually, but check this out: firearms don't really result in bloodshed being take, uh, bloodshed or lives being taken majority of the time, even when they're incorporated into the situation. Now, statistics prove this, right? Out of all those lives that were saved that I just mentioned, six hundred thousand due to firearms, ninety some on ninety eight, ninety nine percent of the time, not a single bullet was fired. Just the act of an a predator seeing that firearm or knowing that their intended victim is armed, statistically speaking, this is not my opinion, man. And a lot of times, check this out, man. These statistics, they're acknowledged by anti-gun groups too, all right? They're irrefutable. You can't argue with statistics. They can try to spin them. They can try to point to them being, oh, they're not relevant or they don't matter or we don't feel that that accurately represents our emotions, but it, they're statistics, Okay, how many people die every year? How many people are saved every year? You can't argue with that. All right. Now, check this out. Firearms not only save more lives than they take every year. Okay, but majority of the time when a firearm is utilized to fend off a perpetrator or predator, bloodshed is not incorporated into the encounter. It is not prevalent. There's no bloodshed whatsoever. There's no bullets flying through the individual. There's no shots fired. That's like 98 percent of the encounters. OK, so just like seatbelts. All right. Majority of the time when somebody gets into an accident or has a bad time and their seatbelt is being utilized or being worn as a preventative measure, it helps them. It saves their life. Right. But if it's being utilized incorrectly. That's a different story. The same exact series of events or information or details or outcome or results in regards to firearms. It's an identical analogy. It's a very accurate metaphor for firearms seat belts. So if you have somebody arguing because they're not familiar with firearms or they've been fed that rhetoric by the news, you can tell them, check this out, man. The statistics in regarding firearms are very similar in comparison with seat belts. You know, seat belts kill people every year when they're utilizing correctly or worn incorrectly, but overall they save a lot more lives than they take, and they're very essential. Just because the scene of a seat belt killing somebody is very graphic doesn't mean that you only embed that imagery into your mind and hold on to that. That's not accurate. You have to take in all the facts, all of the imagery, to develop a well rounded, versatile, accurate perspective or approach on things, right? You can't just isolate one picture or one detail if you take a puzzle and you take one piece of that puzzle out do you know what that puzzle consists of if i hand you a piece of a puzzle do you know what the overall picture consists of you don't know anything all you know is that one little piece and that's what people are being fed via the news via their political candidates whatever they may be regardless of whether it's firearms immigrants anything is scapegoats you got people utilizing mental gymnastics to make it seem as if our environment's invincible you know what I'm saying? An alternative fuel source technology is evil because it threatens financial status in regards to oil tycoons. So there's always going to be a set of scapegoats in everybody's mind. The question is, is there validity? Is there truth to it? You know what I'm saying? We in our movement remove ourselves from that scapegoat mentality. We're not the victim. It doesn't matter what circumstances we were born into or what injustices we face. We have it in us to adapt and evolve and lead. The excuses don't do us any good. They don't do our fellow man any good. They don't do the planet any good. We can always say, hey, you know what, man? I don't think my circumstances or my environment or the foundation that I've been allotted or the lack thereof, the lack of foundation, that the foundation I haven't been allotted, the opportunities I haven't received at all, right? We can utilize that as an excuse to be problematic. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I've got to get mines, homie. I'm going to get you, dog. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're a fortunate being. Not me, though, homie. You don't understand what it's like for me. Why, why, why? But it could always be worse. You feel me? That victim mindset, that self-obsessed mentality, that's what the racists, the world destroyers, the selfish beings, the parasites, 
whatever you want to refer to them as, there's many different shapes and sizes and colors when it comes to obstacles of our world, right? That's the kind of mentality they use. And that's the kind of trap they've designed for people to remain within. When you only care about yourself and what you've experienced throughout life and what you can manage to acquire, you're falling into the elitist agenda. That's how those elitists maintain their positions of wealth and power. The same way they maintain the rhetoric via the media sites or news. They want you to believe the bullshit so you don't have a mind of your own. Now, check this out. Out of all the school shooters, 99% of them were on ADD medication. This is one of the details the news doesn't cover and nobody else seems to stumble upon. But when I've researched this, i found that detail. It's irrefutable. Another irrefutable statistic. You know that? 99%. That means every single school shooter that's ever basically commenced action. In regards to shooting up their fellow classmates, right? I'm telling you, they were on ADD medication. I can only find one of them that wasn't. Out of all of them. Isn't that crazy? Now, we're not going to go in on just the left or just the right, man. Both sides, both parties, both political allegiances are comprised of industrial-sized infants with an extremist agenda, okay? They, um, they don't consist of solution-based role models or beings, man. It's just the way our society's developed over the years. It became more and more extreme in all aspects or categories. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to evolve alongside each other and reach a solution-based middle ground to where we don't view our fellow man as an enemy or an obstacle or we don't feel in competition with our fellow human beings continually. When You know, this is a meaningless slumber party competition conundrum, bro, where everybody's kind of just trying to extract a drop of satisfaction or entertainment through their meaningless day and then resent their fellow human beings and find their scapegoats and it just repeats, repeats until people die a pointless death and the planet's being destroyed. People are being stripped of their purpose. I mean, people are very empty. This doesn't work. This isn't fulfilling or sustainable at all. Period.